Hello, I'm Sarah and I'm a biochemist, a hypnotist. I'm also trained in neurology and I also am a movement teacher. And in this video, I want to share a few uh, life hacks uh, with you. I don't particularly like the word hack, uh, so I would say sort of life optimizations. So it's in a way to help you look better, sleep better, feel better and function better. So just to be very brief, uh, our ancestors basically lived in caves, were outside a lot, uh, hunted uh, uh, for food and ate whatever plants and things that they could find. And also uh, there was no electricity and such like and our genes are designed for that kind of lifestyle. Nowadays we have this abundance of brand new foods, chemicals, uh, technology, mobile phones. So in a way our genes are not really designed to live in our current environment. So what can you do to help yourself keep uh, healthy and function well in this environment? So the main things that are of key importance are what you eat, because food is a drug, how much sleep you get, how much you move around, and also your exposure to light. So that could be natural sunlight or artificial light from screens and computers. I'll go through some ideas with you to help you function better in this life. So you can take on board none of my advice, some of it or all of it. And also, like everything, I don't know everything. There's loads more out there for you to discover. So let's begin with sleep, because new research is showing that bad sleep is actually worse in lots of ways than a bad diet and not exercising. And it's linked to things like depression, cardiovascular disease, obesity and such like. So what can you do to help yourself sleep better? So very first of all, making sure that your bedroom is dark and not too warm. Then we come to the problem of too much light. So either you can be strict with yourself and turn your screens off, iPads, televisions, bright lights in the house, going to the supermarket late at night at around about 8 p.m. or earlier, so two hours before going to bed. Also, if that's not going to work for you, if you have got a day job or you need to work on your computer late in the evening, you can invest in these kind of glasses. So these ones here I've got, they're uh, daytime glasses, so they help block out UV and blue light from computer screens and Strange as they look, people are starting to wear them more often. So when I work on the computer, I use these to protect my eyes from the blue light uh, that's emitted from the screen because it is linked to eye problems later in life. And genetically, I'm a predisposed to macular degeneration. So I know that things like smoking and blue light could potentially make that worse. These glasses here that uh, are from True Dark and they're full light blockers. So even though I can still see out of them, according to my brain, everything's completely dark. So if I do have to work on my computer late in the evening, I wear these and it helps my brain make uh, melatonin, which is inhibited by too much light and too much caffeine in the evening. And uh, these I found to be invaluable for uh, when I have to have late nights or particularly if I have to travel and then work in uh, different time zones. It helps me sort of realign my body clock. If you're not a fan of the glasses, the other option uh, you can try would be one of these. So this is an acupressure mat. So what you do is you put it uh, in bed, uh, lie on it so it prickles you and is a bit painful to start with. So you lie either in thin pyjamas or uh, without any clothes for about maybe half an hour, 20 minutes. And what your body will do is it'll start to produce its own natural endorphins, uh, which are natural painkillers. And people find this very helpful for, for getting to sleep. Also, again, the use of computers and things in the evenings. I tend to avoid uh, emails or social media in the evening just because sometimes it can get quite emotionally provoking uh, if you've got a nasty email in the evening or some trolls on your social media. For those of you who are interested in supplements, my favourite for sleeping is this here, uh, the Quicksilver Liposomal Melatonin, uh, which uh, gets absorbed very quickly into the bloodstream. So with liposomes, it's uh, like a little bubble carrying the drug or uh, vitamin or whatever, and it gets absorbed straight into the skin through the mouth. And I've found the liposomal melatonin much better than the tablets for those of people who are interested in supplements. And again, there are more sleep hacks, which I'll go uh, into in other videos.
The next topic would be a food and diet because nowadays people are so confused about what they should eat and meat's being really demonised at the moment. So no disrespect whatsoever to people who are vegetarian or vegan for ethical reasons. I respect that um, and that's fine. That, however, there are um, problems with importing uh, exotic fruit and vegetables into countries. So if you're really into ethics, you should really only buy local produce. However, uh, I want to emphasize that meat isn't bad. Humans have been eating meat ever since we've existed. We're, we're hunter-gatherers uh, by nature. So I would say good quality grass-fed uh, animal uh, meat, pasture-fed eggs, absolutely fantastic. Uh, eggs are a complete food. There's nothing wrong with uh, good quality red meat. I'm not a fan of sausages or uh, cured meat or anything processed. Also, um, like I said, an egg is a complete food and you've got plenty of choices. You can have duck eggs, goose eggs, all kinds of things. And again, going for the farm raised, local, pasture fed, if you can get it, eggs. When it comes to dairy, that's a bit of a mixed bag. Some people are fine with it, some people aren't. Uh, and also certain dairy produce can make people mucousy. And for some people like myself, things like cheese and milk tend to spike my insulin quite a lot. So I try to avoid that as much as possible. But again, dairy is one of those mixed bags and it's, and it's up to you. Also, when it comes to complete food, seafood is great as well. Wild caught salmon. I would avoid tuna and swordfish because of the mercury content, but I'll come into toxins a bit later. And then things like uh, mussels, oysters, again, they're a, a complete animal, uh, a complete food. And another interesting thing I found that the red caviar, if you can find it and afford it, is a really good source of really clean omega-3 because I'm a bit wary of most of the omega-3 supplements that you buy in shops, particularly the ones that you find on the shelves because the fats have probably oxidized. They've been processed in a lab. And also, again, for omega-3s, good quality grass-fed butter contains omega-3 as well. The other thing about food is, uh, don't be afraid of being hungry. This idea of eating six meals a day to keep the metabolism going is a dreadful idea because every time you eat, particularly carbohydrates, you're spiking your insulin. And just to be brief, insulin is a storage hormone. So if you're eating five or six times a day, you're pushing your body into storage mode all the time, particularly if you want to lose weight, you're going to have real trouble if you're constantly in this sort of storage uh, phase of your biochemistry. There are huge benefits to fasting and I've got other videos on fasting, so don't be afraid of fasting. It's not an eating disorder in disguise. Our ancestors could have easily gone days and days without food. And there's very interesting biochemistry that happens when you fast. I won't go into it in detail in this video because I have other videos on it, but very briefly, when you fast, things like your growth hormone goes up. And also it stimulates something called autophagy, which means your body starts to break down old and damaged cells and organelles. So basically getting rid of all the crap out of, new, out of your body to use as energy. So fasting is perfectly safe, perfectly normal, and also not to be afraid of being hungry. Some people actually, when studies have been done, have been found to be eating up to 10 times a day and feeding your body that much and putting yourself in a storage and growth state all the time is a recipe for disaster. And when it comes to exercise, this is a no brainer, really. The, the body's a machine that's designed to move. There's a plethora of different kinds of exercises that you can do. Each of them have their benefits. There's huge benefits from doing resistance exercise. That will be weights because you can gain lean muscle, which is useful as a, a, a metabolic sink for glucose. And also it's helpful for supporting the joints. And it's linked to uh, long longevity or wouldn't say longevity, but good quality of life. And sarcopenia, loss of muscle mass as you get older, is uh, something to, you really want to avoid. So no matter what your age is, if you can do it, if you can lift weight, lift something heavy safely, go for it. Other exercises that include lots of complex movements that are quite gentle, such as Tai Chi, yoga and Pilates, they're great for keeping the body mobile and supple. Also, the, the nervous system loves novelty, so there's lots and lots of exercises in those disciplines and you have to follow along, learn copy somebody else. And the same with dance, that's another uh, great uh, way of movement. 
With those more gentle activities, they're what they're not designed for muscle building or for cardiovascular improvement. But as I said before, there's so many different kinds of exercise that you can choose. Of course, you want to do something that you enjoy as well. So that's where playing sports, something sensible for your age, but you know, I still do gymnastics in my 40s and I'm perfectly fine with that. My father played squash well into his 50s and he still, he was fine with that. So again, it's about enjoyment as well. But the other thing which is highly overlooked is just going for a walk. So even three 10 minute walks a day, you can get benefits from that. And there's no excuse uh, really when it comes to, to exercise. There's something for everybody out there. Also not to underestimate the power of HIT, which is high intensity exercise for short periods of time. There are hundreds of videos on YouTube of HIT workouts where you go flat out for 30 seconds or a minute, have a rest, and then go again flat out. Even for older people, uh, like my step -gran, what she does, she walks to one lamppost, then runs to the next, walks to the next lamppost, runs to the next. So there's ways to incorporate high intensity exercise, exercise into your routine, regardless of your age. Another topic which comes up quite a lot is coffee. And again, it all depends. If you don't tolerate coffee or caffeine, then avoid it. However, if you are a coffee fan, the best time to drink coffee would be after about 9.30 in the morning because we have a hormone called cortisol which is key for living but it also in excess is a stress hormone which can cause all kinds of problems in the body and when you wake up in the morning your cortisol levels uh, start to rise about 6am and they peak and then they start to drop again around about um, 8, 8.30, it depends on the person and then by about 9.30 onwards uh, the cortisol levels are, are quite low again. So that means having a, a cup of coffee really early in the morning, really strong, you're gonna add a stimulant on top of a stimulant and you can make yourself quite wired and jittery, which isn't really helpful, particularly if you are prone to stress anyway. The other thing that I do with coffee is sometimes I add a little bit of L-theanine in. You can either have a cup of green tea with your coffee or you can buy L-theanine as a powder and add a little bit to your coffee. So L-theanine uh, is a compound which tends to uh, balance things out a bit. People use it also as a nootropic, sort of a smart drug. So that's again something you can add to your coffee uh, to help make sure that you use coffee sensibly so it can be a pleasant stimulant rather than make, making you jittery or even a bit speedy. Also, I'd recommend no more than um, two to three cups of coffee a day. And I try to stop uh, drinking coffee around about 2 p.m. Coffee, I think, has got a half-life of about five to six hours. And I don't really want caffeine around in the evening when I'm trying to go to sleep, because first of all, it's gonna keep me awake. And secondly, inhibits the production of melatonin, which is your body's natural sleep hormone. And as I emphasized before, the importance of good sleep. Next substance, which, uh, people find pleasurable and ask questions about would be alcohol. Personally, I'm not a drinker, although I will, for special occasions, have uh, alcohol. And for some people, particularly if you've got gut problems, alcohol is not the best thing for you because alcohol promotes leaky gut. And in animal studies, they give mice sort of vodka and things like that to make the gut leaky, which means the little junctions between the linings of the cell and the gut open, and then unwanted things can start to pass through into the bloodstream. However, alcohol with food and insensible amounts is perfectly fine, and like I said, each their own. So if I am gonna drink alcohol, what I'll use is something called glutathione here. So as I'm a detox biochemist, glutathione has lots of functions in the body, including uh, conjugating or binding to certain toxins to help them be removed from the body. Also, it's a very strong uh, natural antioxidant. So if you drink a lot of alcohol, you're going to be uh, needing more glutathione um, to help your body remove the toxins. But also, it's something that I think if you are going to go on a drinking uh, binge, have some glutathione first, and then when you get home, the, this brand, the Quicksilver Liposomal Glutathione, I think is the best. It's lab tested. You can check out all of their data on it. It's guaranteed to work. You don't want to be buying cheap glutathione that's in a tablet. It, it, it won't work. And also, um, you'll just be spending and wasting uh, money unnecessarily, and you won't get any benefits either. The other thing which is really useful for uh, the liver is something called milk thistle, and there's all kinds of different preparations that you can buy. I use the 
liposomal uh, milk thistle again because it's a superior delivery method but also I use um, uh, methylated B vitamins uh, and again vitamins and supplements is quite a big topic and the take-home message there is you've got to get the vitamin in the right form and be able to absorb it properly so if I do ever have a drink I use this it's called ultra vitamin and it's made by Quicksilver it's got other things vitamins in it like important and useful things like vitamin D, vitamin K2 in a liposomal form so they get absorbed straight away. Also this particular preparation has got milk thistle in it already so it saves me having to buy two supplements uh, and it's reasonably uh, priced I think in the UK it's about £33 so it's about the same as any other uh, high well actually quite less than another high-end vitamin supplement in a tablet although it's up to you you can buy your uh, methylated B vitamins and your milk thistle from wherever you want but from personal experience liposomes are superior delivery if you want to drink that's the recipe that I use methylated B vitamins milk thistle and glutathione Mu greatly reduced levels of uh, problems in the body and uh, no hangovers for me I I'm not a big drinker like I say so if you do want to go on a massive bender that uh, this is recommended. You probably will get a little bit of a hangover, but it's not going to be nearly as bad as uh, it could be. And now into my favourite topic of all, which are toxins. Like I said right at the beginning, our ancestors probably weren't exposed to that many toxins because of we didn't have industrialization, all these hundreds of thousands of chemicals that we've invented uh, throughout the ages. They would have been exposed to things like mercury and certain metals because they exist in the Earth's crust. But again, um, people didn't have uh, um, uh, amalgam fillings then. And also I mentioned earlier that you can get a huge amount of mercury from things like tuna and swordfish. Nowadays, the main toxin problem, I would say, is pollution, but also in the huge amount of uh, cleaning chemicals that we come across, uh, cosmetics, things like that, uh, household products. Luckily, there are lots of brands you can get which they have had the uh, uh, toxin level severely reduced. I have lots of friends who make their own uh, cosmetics, so I know exactly what goes in them. This is an example of what I got for Christmas. So it's a little selection of um, different cosmetics, and it's made by a company called um, Eth uh, Ethique. This is a New Zealand company because half my family are New Zealanders, so we do try and support uh, uh, our uh, friends uh, over the other side of the world. So. With these, what we've got in here is we've got some soap, uh, a exfoliator, another kind of body wash. This one here is a deodorant without aluminium and other things in it. And this is like a body butter. So it's just some sheer butter. So it's low in particularly toxic chemicals. There's not too much packaging here, not a load of plastic, no perfumes uh, and things like that. But again, uh, wherever you are, there's always going to be some local uh, cosmetics uh, maker which you can support. And also the shops uh, are now getting more savvy about washing powders, dishwasher, tablets, uh, all kinds of other cosmetics that you can uh, come across. Also, there's lots and lots of things you can use to clean your house. But again, I want to keep it brief. So the take home message here is you can uh, minimize how many toxins you put in your body by avoiding certain things. As I'm a detox biochemist, of, of course, there's a problem with people who've got toxins in them already. So there's lots of uh, protocols that you can use to get toxins out. Drinking green smoothies and things like that doesn't work. Fasting encourages your body to remove toxins, but also you need certain things to catch the toxins. So here I have some ortho uh, sialic acid, which is for binding to aluminium. There are all kinds of other uh, binding compounds like lead can be bound by EDTA and then IMD binds mercury. And then things like activated charcoal, chitosan, clays bind a wide range of toxins. So that angle of toxin uh, removal would be you follow a particular protocol to push the toxins out of your body. And then you use these binders to catch uh, the toxins because I sometimes drink out of aluminium tins and some of my saucepans are made of aluminium, I use the sialic acid with little crumbs of it to try and uh, catch some of the aluminium so that I don't eat as much, although I am going to change over to ceramic uh, cooking equipment very soon. So the final topic that I'd like to address would be spiritual health, which people often neglect. And this might be say having a hypnosis session now and again with somebody, prayer of course is um, 
very beneficial for the soul. If you're not religious, there are other things like meditation, which you can learn. Or for, if you're not into that at all, a hobby or something which is quite meditative, say drawing or painting, things like that. Something where you're calming the mind, almost going into a trance state or a flow state. These states are very, very important for health. And as I've said before, with our sort of 24-7 uh, lifestyle of rushing about technology everywhere, so many choices in the shops, it is good to have quiet time just to allow your brain to go into that uh, meditative state. And there's research to show that there's many benefits to meditation health-wise. And like, like exercise, one size doesn't fit all, but I highly recommend you find something, whatever it's going to whatever suits your lifestyle and personality, something quiet and meditative that doesn't involve other people or television, something where you can just be on your own in a meditative, enjoyable, calm state. Anyway, we've come to the end of my uh, whirlwind tour of life or hacks or bio-optimization. I hope you find it useful. Again, I of course, there are lots more things that you can do, but I've covered the things which I feel uh, are important in general and important to me. So any questions, feel free to get in touch. And of course, I'll be making more videos with other topics or focusing more on certain topics. I'll have a great day. Goodbye.